Secretary of State Mike Pompeo could designate the Houthi militia as a terrorist organization this week. U.S. National Security Advisor Robert C. O'Brien said that the U.S. had options to deal with the Houthis in Yemen, adding that Washington has been constantly studying this decision, calling on the militia to stay away from Iran and stop attacking neighboring countries. He further criticized the Houthis for their failure in engaging in negotiations and showing good intentions to end the conflict in Yemen, adding that Washington has been monitoring the situation closely over the past period. The United States imposed fresh Iran-related sanctions, blacklisting an entity and individual as Washington continues to ramp up pressure on Tehran during U.S. President Donald Trump's final months in office. The U.S. Treasury Department in a statement said that it had slapped sanctions on Shahid Misami Group and its director, accusing the entity of being involved in Iran's chemical weapons research and linked to the Iranian Organization of Defensive Innovation and Research, which is listed by Washington. The move comes days after the killing of the Islamic Republic's top nuclear scientist last week. Iran's supreme leader promised on Saturday to retaliate for the killing, raising the threat of a new confrontation with the West and Israel in the remaining weeks of Trump's presidency. Lebanon is on the verge of not being able to feed itself as the country's financial crisis hikes poverty and inflation. Since last year, the unprecedented meltdown has crashed the currency and wiped up jobs. Photos of people rummaging through dumpsters or selling their belongings online for food have circulated widely in recent months. Lebanon's central bank and government had traded blame over the crisis. The bank can only maintain basic subsides for two more months and the state should come up with a plan. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo used his final NATO meeting this week to sharply criticize Turkey, saying its purchase of a Russian weapon system was a gift to Moscow. At the confidential foreign minister's video conference, Pompeo said Turkey was undermining NATO security and creating instability in the eastern Mediterranean in a dispute with Greece and non-NATO member Cyprus over gas resources. Pompeo, who leaves office in January as U.S. President Donald Trump's term ends, also told Turkish Foreign Minister that Turkey was wrong to send paid Syrian fighters to Libya as the U.S. Defense Department concluded in a report in July and also to the conflict in Nagarana Karabakh. French Interior Minister said that French authorities will inspect dozens of mosques and prayer halls suspected of radical teachings starting Thursday as part of a crackdown on extremists following a spate of attacks. He said that if any of the 76 prayer halls inspected was found to promote extremism, they would be closed down. The inspections are part of the government's response to two brutal recent attacks that shocked France. The October 16th beheading of a teacher who showed his pupils cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad and the stabbing to death of three people in a church in Nice on October 29th. According to findings released by the United Nations Development Program, severe long-term effects of the COVID-19 pandemic could push an additional 207 million people into extreme poverty on top of the current pandemic trajectory, bringing the total to over 1 billion by 2030. This is not a foregone conclusion, with the focused set of investments toward achieving the Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs. An additional 146 million people could be lifted out of extreme poverty compared to current COVID-19 trends. The report said under a high damage scenario where the recovery is protracted, COVID-19 is likely to push an additional 207 million people into extreme poverty by 2030 and increase the female poverty head count by an additional 102 million compared to their baseline. The United Nations announced that an agreement has been reached with the Ethiopian government to allow unembedded, sustained and secure access for humanitarian supplies to reach those in need across areas now under its control in Tijray. Confirming details of the deal at UN headquarters in New York, spokesperson said that the safe passage of aid supplies and staff also extends to the Ethiopian regions of Amhara and Afar, 
bordering Tijeray, where fighting between federal and regional forces has impacted around 6 million people during the past month. Until now, no supplies have been allowed into the conflict zone, which has displaced thousands, many across the border into Sudan. The overall number of global coronavirus cases has topped 64.4 million, while the deaths have surged to more than 1.49 million, according to the latest figures. In its update on Thursday, the university's Center for Systems Science and Engineering CSSE, revealed that the current global caseload and death toll stood at 64,447,657 and 1,491,559 respectively. The U.S. is the worst head country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 13,916,543 and 273,316 respectively. Germany has extended the coronavirus shutdown until January 10, 2021, in an effort to control the spread of the deadly disease. The country has been under a partial lockdown since November 2. The announcement was made on Wednesday by Chancellor Angela Merkel after her five-hour meeting with 16 German state leaders. The Chancellor said that the aim was to reduce the seven-day incidence new infections per 100,000 inhabitants within seven days to less than 50. Turkey's health minister has announced a plan to start using an experimental Chinese COVID-19 vaccine later this month amid the surge in infections and deaths. The health minister had previously announced an agreement with China's Sinovac Biotech for 50 million doses of corona vaccine, which is currently in late-stage trials. He said in a statement late Wednesday that the first shipment of the vaccine will arrive in Turkey after December 11th. Japan wants to ban sales of new petrol cars in around 15 years' time as part of efforts to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. The new policy could be announced as soon as next week, building on an existing push to promote electric and hybrid vehicles. The move has been welcomed by activists and the UN, but Japan is still heavily reliant on fossil fuels and the government has not yet laid out details of how it will achieve this. Israel received the first of its new missile boats. Fleet upgrade dramatically improves the country's ability to counter regional rivals, including Iran. The procurement of four naval vessels and three submarines from German industrial giant Tissel Krug has been the subject of long running corruption groups involving two allies of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Iran has accused Israel of assassinating one of its leading nuclear scientists, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, outside Tehran last week. Israeli officials have declined to comment on the allegations. Deforestation of rainforests in Brazil's Amazon region has reached a 12-year high. Brazil's National Institute for Space Research, INP, which is responsible for monitoring the rainforest, said this week. Between August 2019 and July 2020, 11,088 square kilometers of jungle were cut down in the region, which represent the largest area removed since 2008, according to MP. This corresponds to about 4,340 football fields per day or three football fields per minute. Deforestation increased by 9.5% compared to the same period last year. Following the August 4th explosion in the Lebanese capital, Mar Mikal and Jemais, two Beirut neighborhoods close to the port, were devastated. They had been buzzing with life before a large part of the capital was destroyed that day. When its heart stopped beating, its streets, cafes and neighborhoods froze and its people were traumatized. Around 40% of the 90 restaurants, cafes in the area and 158 in Mar Mikal joined the initiative. Other business owners who didn't participate expressed their frustration and were left without hope, having not received any support from official agencies.